and welcome back to another Be Hooked Crochet video tutorial. I'm your host Brittany and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the New Waves Barefoot Sandal. This is a free pattern that's available on my blog and I will leave the link to that pattern in the description below so you can access the written pattern as well as use the tutorial. Now this will be a full tutorial. We'll discuss everything you need to know to complete this little project and you should have your barefoot sandals in about an hour or so. Honestly, it's it's pretty quick little project. It's beginner friendly, so it's it's great if you're just starting out to crochet. For this tutorial, you only need a few supplies. I like to use a cotton blend yarn, especially for the barefoot sandals. It's a little bit softer on your foot and it's also a little bit more durable. So today I'm going to be using Bernat Cottonish and th this is a, a Vicki Howell yarn which I actually really really like this stuff. The colorway that I'm using is called Crimson Twine so if you're wanting to duplicate the exact same. And now this cotton yarn calls for a smaller hook and that's what we're going to be using for this tutorial. You, you can get a worsted weight or you know a heavier cotton yarn but it may not be fitting for this particular tutorial now you can modify it because see the gauge is going to be a little bit bigger with bigger yarn and then it might be too big for your foot so we'll discuss sizing and and all that stuff as we go along but for now try to get a hold of a cotton that is a lightweight or a number three or you know if you want to use an acrylic blend if you've got that in your stash then I'm sure it will work out just fine as well. Now for my yarn I am going to be using a four millimeter crochet hook and I've also got a pair of scissors and a darning needle. You're going to need those later on to weave in your ends and to trim off your tails. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started. One thing I will note about this pattern is that the size of the motif is actually pretty interchangeable, you know, one size fits all, where you're going to need to make the adjustments to fit your foot or the person's foot that you're making these for is on the the loop section. Okay, so this is the smaller loop that hooks on to your second toe and then of course this is the strap that goes around your ankle and this is all one piece. Now we're not making this functional, you know, you don't have to tie these. There are some patterns out there where you can do that but this is actually a little bit easier. It just slides right on your foot and so when we get to that point I'll talk about how many I chain based on the size of my foot and just know that if you have a foot that's slightly larger or smaller than mine then you may have to modify those chain numbers, okay? So go ahead and grab your yarn and we'll get started. To start off making the first barefoot sandal, what we need to do is create a slip knot. And to do that, we're just going to take the tail end of our yarn in our dominant hand. We're going to wrap it around our index finger two times, and that's going to be coming towards you. And then we're just going to take this back strand, pull it over the front, pull the front strand up and over, and then just kind of pull on that tight. And now you should be able to pull on the working strand of your yarn and tighten that knot up. Okay, and so now what we need to do is start to form the ring. So we're going to be crocheting this little triangle motif from the inside out. And so we need to start off with a little circle. And to do that, we just need to chain three. So to make a chain, we're just going to wrap the yarn and pull it through the loop on our hook. Wrap the yarn, pull it through, wrap the yarn, and pull it through and that is your three chains. Now this that's attached to your hook never actually counts as a chain, okay? So you won't ever count that in your stitch count. And now to form a ring, what we need to do is basically just insert our hook directly into the first chain, just like that. And then we want to yarn over and pull that loop through the chain. And then we want to continue by pulling that loop through the loop that was already on our hook. And so from now, it's going to be a little bit hard to manage at this point because this is a really small piece that we're working with, but I promise you it'll get easier as we go along. What I like to do when I'm working with starting off in the round using the chain method, which is what we just did, I like to pull on the sides to open up, and you can see it kind of looks like a pretzel in there. So we've got these two openings up on the top and then we've got this larger one at the bottom. That larger one at the bottom, that's going to be where we work into. 
And sometimes I like to try to fit my finger through that loop if I can or get part of my fingernail in there just to kind of hold my place so I don't have to fumble and try to find it later on. So that's really going to help you in the long run. So from here the next step is to chain three. And the reason why we're chaining three is because we are working in double crochet stitches. And a double crochet is three chains high. Okay. And now we're also for this round going to be working in groups of three double crochets. So this chaining of three counts as one. And now we want to put two more double crochet into the center of our ring that we've got marked here with our finger. So to do a double crochet you want to yarn over and insert your hook into the loop and then pull up your loop you know yarn over pull up a loop so now you've got three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through two and then yarn over and pull through two and that's how you make a double crochet so we're, doing, we're just going to do that one more time exactly the same okay and now that we've got this little group of three double crochets we need to start working on a corner and we're going to be doing this three times since we're working in a triangle and triangles have three points so we're going to be working on the first point point. and to make a point all you have to do is chain two it's that simple and that will create the perfect corner and now we're going to make another group of three double crochet So do it just like before. Make sure you get your hook inside that ring and just work around it. And do the best you can to keep it steady in your hands. That's really one of the keys to working with smaller pieces is just being able to hold on to everything and sometimes it gets a little bit tricky. Okay, let's see, there we go. I've got three double crochets there and so we're going to be coming up on the next point. So to do that, just like before, we chain two. And then we're going to put three more double crochet into the center of the ring, which as you can see, it gets a little bit easier to manage. The, the ring will stay open once you get a few stitches in there and it's much easier to work in. Okay, and we need to finish off by creating our last corner. And just like the other two corners, we're just going to chain two to make that happen. And now we need to join this to make it all come together. And as you can see, what I'm looking at here is my chaining of three that I started from, you know, the beginning of the round. And we want to join what we've currently got here with the third chain using a slip stitch. Okay, so just count count your chains the best you can. So I've got one, two, and three, and just insert your hook directly into that third chain and slip stitch by pulling, yarning over, pulling that through, and then pulling it through again. And that completes round one. Working on round two, we're going to start off similar to how we started the last round. We're going to chain up three. Again, we're working in double crochets, and double crochets are three chains high. So we're going to chain three, and now every time we reach a corner, we're going to be increasing to make this round a little bit bigger than the last. And the way we do that is we're going to have two double crochets, a chain two, and two more double crochets. Okay, just keep that in the back of your mind. And from here, since we've got the chaining of three, we just need to add one more double crochet into the gap space. And as you can see, I've got, this is where my slip stitch join is, and I've got my chaining of three. So I'm just putting my hook directly into the gap space, and that's where I'm working this double crochet. Okay, and now we're gonna put a double crochet into each of these three double crochets from round one. And now this this first one is a little bit tricky because we've got a chain three here, okay? But we can't neglect that. We do have to put a stitch there. So what I like to do is just find basically the best point. And you're going to have to end up going into one of the chains. And that's okay. That's pretty much what you have to do. And so just work your double crochet into the top chain. 
and then just continue on going. You find your next stitch and put a double crochet. In the next stitch and double crochet. And now at this point we've reached the corner again. So just like I said before, we're going to double crochet two, chain two, and double crochet two more times. And we're going to do that all in the same space right here, this, this gap. Okay, so just double crochet two. Don't worry about working into the chain, so we're going to work around the chains. Okay, it makes things a little neater and a lot easier on you. So I did my two double crochets. I'm chaining two, and I'm putting two more double crochets into that same space. And so what we've done here is effectively increased this corner, and we've also maintained the shape of the corner by adding the chain two. And now just like before, we want to put one stitch in each of these three double crochet. And now one thing you want to be careful of is this first stitch here is really easy to, to miss. A lot of people are tempted to work right here thinking that's their first stitch, but in fact, sometimes these two double crochet that we just made will cover up part of the stitch. Okay, so just make sure you catch that one. Otherwise your sandal will be a little lopsided and it, it will be you basically won't be increasing in the proper amount, so it'll probably be noticeable. Okay, now I've finished up those three. Now just like before, we've reached a corner. So do you remember what to do? We're going to double crochet two, chain two, and double crochet two more, all in that same spot. So I'm chaining two now, working my other two double crochet. That's one, and here's two. And now I'm working on my last side. Just like I said before, don't forget that stitch there at the very beginning. Just work right into it. Sometimes you, have to may, you may have to push the stitches aside to kind of get to it, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, so I've got my my stitches in, in these three, and now I've come up to the last corner. Now, remember, we already put two in this corner, so we had the chain three, and then we put one more. So all we need to do is add two more double crochet into that spot, and then we're going to chain two to maintain the corner, the shape of the corner. Okay, so once you get your double crochet, just chain two. And then we need to slip stitch again to the very top chain of this chaining of three. So I've got one chain right here, two, and three. So I'm going to insert my hook directly into that chain, yarn over, and I'm going to slip stitch it together. And that finishes off round two. And can you believe we're basically halfway done? We've only got two more rounds to go. So it's pretty simple. We'll go ahead and get started with round three. Okay, round three is essentially the same as round two. We're going to start off by chaining three. We're going to put a double crochet one more time into this gap space. So just yarn over, put it directly in that space, and finish off your double crochet. Now the next stitch that we're going to work into, remember, is a chain. So we're going to have to yarn over, and you can kind of see there's a little hole there, and that's the, my top chain basically. So I'm just going to work my stitch right into that hole. Now I'm going to continue on by double crocheting in each of the next stitches. And we're going to work this all the way to the next corner. Now that we've reached our corner, we're going to do the same as before. We need to increase, so we're going to double crochet two, chain two, and double crochet two more times. I've got 
got my two double crochet, I'm chaining two, and I'm double crocheting two more times. Now I'm going to continue on by double crocheting once into each of all of these stitches, being careful not to skip that first one. Okay, now I've reached this next corner, so just like before, double crochet two, chain two, double crochet two more. Now once again one double crochet into each of the next stitches across this side of the triangle. And then coming up to the last corner, just like before, we just want to put two double crochet and two chains to finish it off because we've already got two in there from where we started this round. Okay, so I've got my two, I'm chaining two. Now I'm finding this chaining of three, and you can see it's right here. And I'm going to count one, two, and three, and I'm going to slip stitch into that third chain. That finishes off round three. Round four is going to start exactly the same as rounds three and rounds two. We're just going to chain three. We're going to double crochet again into this gap space. Just one time, that's counting as two right there since we've got the chaining of three. And now we're going to work our first stitch into this chain three. Okay, my double crochet is kind of hiding it, but you can see right there is where I need to work. Now just continue on double crocheting into each stitch all the way across. And when we come to this next corner, we are going to create the little toe strap. Okay, and this is going to be a good point for you to probably take out your hook and try it on, you know, lay it over your foot, make sure it's the proper size, and it'll give you a better idea of how much room you're going to need to make your toe strap, you know, how long you need to make it. Okay, so I've reached this corner now, and we're still going to maintain the increase. So we need to double crochet two times into that gap space, but essentially all we're changing is normally we would, we would go ahead by putting two double or two chains in order to maintain the corner, but we're just going to make one big long chain and that's going to act as our toe strap. 
Now I wear a size 7 shoe. I feel like I've got a pretty average size and I chain 12 here and that makes it long enough that it reaches my toe but still kind of leaves it snug enough that it's you know not moving around a lot on my foot. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 12. You can chain 12 yourself and then before you attach it on maybe just wrap it around your toe and kind of put it in place to try and see if that's the proper length, okay? If you've got larger feet or smaller feet, you definitely will want to make some adjustments here. So I've got three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve chains. Okay, and now from here we're going to go on down and just kind of continue as if we had only chained two. We're just going to double crochet two times into the corner space here. So sometimes what I like to do when I'm working with big long chains like this, if I try to, you know, yarn over and go into this stitch, it's going to curl upon itself. So I steady it with my finger. So I'll yarn over and I'll kind of catch those two under my index finger. And then just insert your hook into the, the gap space. And I still keep my finger on here to steady it to maintain my tension. If it gets a little too loose, then your double crochets are going to be really big and it's going to be a little bit funny looking. Okay, so just do the best you can. It takes a little bit of practice and even still, you know, it's hard to get a perfect double crochet there. But once you get that first one in, it's pretty much just as easy as it was before. So go ahead and put your two double crochets there after you've created your little toe strap and then just continue on double crocheting into each of the next stitches across the side. Okay, now I've reached this corner and we're going to do this one exactly the same as we've been doing. We're going to double crochet two, chain two, and double crochet two more all into that, that space. So there, here's two double crochet, chain two, and then double crochet two more times into that space. Now we're going to double crochet one time into each of these stitches across the side. We're just about finished. We just got one more little step to do and that's pretty much it. And I haven't really timed myself, but I think it's probably been about 15 minutes or so is all. So it probably won't even take you an hour to do one of these or both of these pair of them. Okay, now I've come up to my last corner. Just like before, I'm double crocheting two. So we need to finish it off by chaining two and then slip stitching to that third chain just like we did before. So count them one, two, and three. You need to slip stitch into the third 
to finish off the round. And now essentially we're completely done. So this is the bottom portion that goes around your toe. And so we, we want to attach the straps now from this side to the other. And we don't even have to bind off or anything. From here, we're just gonna go ahead and make some chains in order to create the strap. And then we're just going to secure it onto the other side. Now, as I said before, I wear a size seven and I need to chain 26 to give me a strap that's long enough that will fit around the back side of my ankle. So again, you may want to put this on your foot to make sure that you are coming up with the correct size, okay? You may have to modify your chain numbers a little bit. Okay, and once you have the correct number of chains, I try to just make sure the chain isn't twisted, and, and that's really just for appearance rather than functionality, okay? It's not really going to matter if it's twisted. It's just going to look a little bit better. And now what I've done is I've, I've put mine so it's upside down, so it's, you know, face down. And from this point, I just need to, like I said, make sure my chain isn't twisted. And then from here, I just want to locate the chain two corner over here. And once you find it, just insert your hook into the corner, just like that, and then slip stitch it into place. So you'll yarn over and pull it through and through. And that is all there is to it. It is that simple. So from this point, I'm just gonna set it down. I'm gonna cut myself a little tail, and I like to pull that tail through the loop on my hook, just like that, and then pull it snug. And now all we have to do at this point is just weave in our tails. And we'll do that next. Okay, so what I've done here off camera is just threaded my darning needle. And I'm going to work on this center tail for now. And what I like to do is just work this strand a few times, you know, it through a few stitches here, going around the circle. So I'm just going to work my, my hook into a few of those strands and just kind of pull it through and maybe work through a few more. And from there you're pretty secure. If you if you crochet like I do, you you already worked over top of this strand for all of these stitches. So you're just kind of adding a little extra security there. And so now we need to work on this strand here. And once again, just thread your darning needle. And for this, since we don't have a center to work it into that's really dense, just find the, the next portion of your barefoot sandal that's pretty dense. And I like to kind of work around the corner here. And so I have to s kind of weave it down through these stitches to get it to that point. But then you can just kind of insert your hook under a few of those stitches and pull it through. And it works if you work back and forth. Okay, that's going to prevent the tails from working themselves back out. Okay, I find this to be very helpful. Once you feel like it's good and secure, all you need to do is trim off your tails and admire your handiwork. So we're done. Now from this point, all you have to do is make another one and that's it. It's so easy and it's, it's fun. I really like this design. I wasn't sure about the whole barefoot sandal idea until I made this first pair and kind of put them on and wore them around a little bit and I think they're so fun. I'm gonna have to make a few. And a fun little thing that you could also do is add beads to it. If you're if you're a more advanced crocheter, you don't even have to be an advanced crocheter really, but if you've ever worked with beads before, it's really simple and you could probably work a few beads into your design. And so when you're putting this on your foot, I had to think about it because it was it's you know fully attached I thought hmm, how, how am I supposed to put this on my foot now so basically all you have to do is put put it on your foot going in this direction as if your toes were right here and then that's when I kind of catch my 
second toe with this loop and then this will just kind of stretch and it will go all the way up and around your ankle or your heel rather and that's all there is to it I hope you've enjoyed this pattern it's been fun this I am doing this tutorial as a reader request she wanted me to do a barefoot sandal and like I said I have a lot of fun with it it's so quick and it's so easy and I would love to see your work. If you'd like to share some pictures with me, please do so on my Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash crochet. And I'm also on Instagram. You can share your pictures by using hashtag behooked or hashtag crochet. On behalf of Behooked Crochet, I'm your host, Brittany, and this has been a tutorial for the free pattern available on my blog for the new wave of spare foot sandal. Until next time, we'll see you soon.